today I will be demonstrating hair, how to paint hair. Uh, it's a whole different story from water I've done before, or dress. I mean, those are all just strokes. How do I handle that? I've done some work before. I will explain a bit about what I've done here, the colors I've used and how to proceed. So, um, as you can see, the palette is more or less the same as the last time, only m way messier, but it's a different story. Um, most importantly, the colors that I used before are the same as for today, but we won't need the cadmium red. So, titanium white is over here. This is the transparent oxide red. Over here we have the Burnt Sienna and this is the Mars Yellow, but you can use Yellow Ochre instead for this one. And down here is our Ultramarine Blue. This is our medium. Once again, it's liquid. So, um, what I've done is I mixed some colors that are quite dark for the hair the darkest spots um, it's the same formula formula I mentioned before so you use uh, one part of ultramarine blue and one part of or one and a half of burnt sienna this mixture gives you a nice dark color like here um, then I did the highlights with uh, white and a bit of transparent oxide red and a tiny bit of mars yellow what i did i'll show it to you although it's wet then i put on top of it a thin layer a kind of glaze like this you see this glaze helps with, let me put it outside of the box, down here, like this. Yeah, helps with your brush work. You can also use uh, just pure liquid for this part, but what I wanted to explain, I used a bit over here, a thin bit over here. What you do with this layer, it makes sure that the brush goes smoothly over the canvas. It's like painting a white surface. When you do this, and now I have a round brush too, mostly I use uh, ox hair for this. So it uh, doesn't matter what brand, if it's, as long as it's ox hair. And then you can just move aside a bit. This is already too thick, but I will proceed and I will succeed at some point. Make sure that you move in the right direction. If you see that the hair is just very straight, then probably it's no use of having too much effect. But over here, I see all kind of hair standing out like this. So I'll make sure to paint them like that. Yeah, it's a very fine work. But even then, I recommend you not to move into that much of a detail that you paint each hair separately. Of course, if you like that, there are other painters who can do this way better than I can. So. But 
for me it's more the oppression that counts yeah. make sure that even now that there is a wet layer underneath it that you use not wet layer Yeah, I have to watch out that my face is not in front of the camera is it? Because then I'll be explaining for nothing. Just for my own fun. If you want to make it thinner it's easy to mix this dark color with bit with it a bit more sienna in it. The gold alongside it. Even in the You can immediately see that it takes the background color when it mixes. Put it tight again. Yeah. Maybe it's too tight already. See this is is one of my typical attributes to a painting is this how do you say it? Corona or light around the silhouette of darkness. It gives much depth. I really like it. As you can see, the hair over here is moving alongside the back of her skull. Well, here it's it's not going alongside the top of a skill. So you have to watch out for that, that you don't paint it like this. Over here, it's getting too bluish. So I think I'll just add a bit of transparent feet of it. Because it's a really strong color to overcompensate. That's my trick. But I have the wrong color at a certain spot, I overcompensate it with the color that's more or less on the other side of the color wheel. So in case of blue that would be kind of orangey. I want to have it real light at some point, you know? Because it's, it's a real big difference between the light. So you can highlight it at any time because it darkens very fast when you mix white with any color, you know? So and since the color that's underneath it is still wet, the white will mix with it. So it will be a bit warm as well. You don't have to worry that much about it. And you don't want to use pure white. In this case you just may, because it mixes. jumps out of the painting.
watch out if you use pure white in spots where it isn't. That, uh, or that wet, I mean, then it ends up being a bit grayish. And that's not what we want. You see in certain spots there is not really any structure over here. You can see it's just pressure. To show you something because there the hair is dark and we need to paint some extra hair as well make it nice curly shapes and of course you need to paint it with dark for this goes the same if you want a smoother surface just put a bit of liquid underneath it very thinly it dries very fast so you have to move on don't Make yourself a breakfast and then do it. Anyway, I'm not much of a breakfast person, so a break breakfast person. Since I'm not British, I'm not into British politics that much either. Yeah, so the general impression is one where this is the most outstanding feature of the hair, but this is also of importance. What I did here is I painted some hair with, um, with blue, marsh yellow, burnt sienna. And a tiny bit of, or just an equal part of, I think yeah, it's all tiny bits now, um, burnt sienna to paint the highlights that are actually in the dark, in the shadow side. As you can see at the dress has some points that are a bit brighter than other points. That's where the bluish light from the sky comes in. And so it has a different tone from <coughs> no, I'm completely wrong from the other colors and then when I did this I noticed that it's time to make sure that I darken up the spots again that are really dark So, this video was about the hair, I hope you liked it, and if you want to see more, because I wanted to do an explanation about the hand in this painting, but since it's in the shadow, I will be doing that in the next painting. So I hope to be posting new stuff in a couple of days. So hopefully see you soon. Goodbye.